Welcome to Ellis B. Feaster's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. I'm with the sound of McCoy Tyner and his big band and a blues for Count Basie recorded just this past November 25, 26. Uh, really quite special, uh, done at the Blue Note in New York. Uh, there we have it. We have it for the music machine as well. It's an afternoon like this that you say, yeah, I think I'll tell Frank Ford to take off the rest of the afternoon. I'm just going to stick in here and play some of my things. But the management won't allow that, and Frank won't either. He waits all week for this Sunday afternoon, which is always quite special. If you'd like to be a star on your own very radio program, you can by simply dialing Frank's number, get on early. A gorgeous John Rose will take your calls up in order, and you'll be the first ones on. It's 664 4100 if you're calling from Philadelphia and suburban areas. Now's a good time to call 664 4100. And for our friends in New Jersey, same old number as has been since day one 365 4100. This is Buddy Rich and the Big Band. Never can say goodbye, but goodbye we must say. We're going to catch you next time around. My name is Sid Mark. This is 96.5 WWDV in Philadelphia, and I'm out of here. W.D.B. Philadelphia. From ABC News, I'm Gary Nunn. The Revolutionary Justice Organization threatens to kill two U.S. hostages if the French Navy intervenes in Lebanon. The pro-Iranian group claims to hold Americans Joseph Sicipio and Edward Tracy. ABC's Julie Flint in Beirut on the announcement issued today to the newspaper On Nahar. The kidnapper said that American hostages would be at risk if France commits any foolishness in Lebanon. The French government has dispatched at least five military vessels to Lebanese waters for what it says are humanitarian purposes. The statement, handwritten in Arabic by the Revolutionary Justice Organization, was accompanied by a black and white photo of Tracy. France is flexing its military muscle to make a diplomatic point to the effort to end the fighting between Syrian forces and Lebanese troops loyal to Christian Army Commander Major General Michel Aoun. More news after this. You thought you were prepared. You bought all the right books and asked all the right questions. You even consulted with your mother. But nothing really prepared you for the unexpected and sometimes overwhelming experience of raising a child. Child Magazine can help. Published by the New York Times, Child is like a bright, witty, realistic friend you turn to for guidance and advice. Filled with expert yet practical information, Child is unlike most parent magazines. Child believes that you can be a terrific parent without having to give up sleep, sex, mobility, or your sanity. How can you do it? You can read Child Magazine. Order now and take advantage of a great subscription offer. One year, six exciting issues for only $10. That's 43% off the cover price. For one year of Child Magazine, call toll-free 800-255-8300 now. That's 800-255-8300 for Child Magazine. Crews today have raised a pleasure boat, rammed, sliced in half, and sunk when it collided with a dredging barge in the River Thames in London. 30 to 60 people are unaccounted for. 89 survived. ABC Nightline associate producer Reed Orvidal was aboard. I turned around and tried to figure out what I should do, but had no time to make that decision. I was pitched into the water by the sinking boat, and uh, the next thing I knew, I uh, found myself uh, about 10 feet from the from the uh, very large ship, um, uh, trying to figure out what had happened. Orbidal says the boat sank in 10 to 20 seconds. Police say there were no survivors in the wreckage. The captain and second mate of the barge have been arrested. No word if any Americans were aboard the pleasure boat. British Prime Minister Thatcher returned home early from a vacation in Austria. Thatcher and the Queen sent messages of condolence to the families of those lost on the boat. Polish Prime Minister-designate Tadeusz Mazowiecki went to church and conferred in Gdańsk, Poland with Lech Wałęsa. Mazowiecki begging thousands of cheering people not to lose faith as he tries to form a government. Parliament tomorrow considers his nomination. U.S. officials, including Attorney General Dick Thornburg, are pleased with announced efforts by Colombia to wage war against big-time drug barons. Officials in Bogota say they're willing to extradite traffickers to the U.S. to face criminal charges. Thornburg tells ABC News the U.S. will seriously look at any requests by Colombian officials to send troops to help fight the drug war. If in Colombia they feel uh, hypothetically that they may have reached the point where they can no longer 
uh, operate under the rule of law and have to use the rule of force, uh, then uh, they're going to require all the help they need against internal uh, threats from the drug traffickers. Thornburg also points out there's been voluntary compliance by some states which has, have established rules that would take away or deny auto licenses to drug abusers. Back to work by the end of the week for striking phone company workers in parts of California and all of Nevada. Negotiator, negotiators rather, have tentatively agreed on a contract covering almost 43,000 people. The strike against Bell Atlantic moves a step closer to settlement as the company's Pennsylvania subsidiary settled with one of two striking unions. Walkouts continue at Ameritech and Ninex. It's a matter of total marketing rather than harvest when it comes to graduate students getting jobs out of school. Dean Richard Thane of the University of Chicago Grad School of Business says those with advanced degrees just may find themselves in what he calls an oriental bazaar when they enter the job market. Students, he says, are wiser. They have demands. This is ABC News. Attention back-to-school shoppers. The Discover card actually pays you cash for every charge. So when you're out buying new computers new clothes or new athletic equipment just use the discover card and earn cash up to one percent back every year based on your annual purchases after all why should school kids be the only ones who get to earn extra credit it pays to discover the card that pays you back for the abc information network i'm gary nunn 96.5 WWDB. We hear you. Good afternoon. Frank Ford on WWDB, and we'll be here till 6 o'clock with uh, all kinds of things controversy, commentary, opinions, opinionated opinions, and all the rest of that. But first, as we say, the WWDB exclusive Weather Central forecast. For the remainder of the day, partly sunny, warm, and humid with a high of 85. Tonight, fair this evening, then partly cloudy with a 30% chance of a thunderstorm late tonight, low 67. Monday, partly sunny, 30% chance of showers or thunderstorms, high of 88. Monday night, partly cloudy, warm, and humid. Showers possible, low 68. Tuesday, a mixture of clouds and sun. Showers possible, High 86. The present temperature is 83 degrees. We don't give you the temperature at the airport, you may have noticed. And the reason for that is, well, it's the same reason that uh, a very funny man named Jackie Mason said. When he was asked, well, he says he watches, the, he watches the weather reports. And they give you the weather, the temperature at the airport and so forth. And he says, who lives at the airport? Why do they have to give it the airport temperature? Nobody lives there. I guess he's right. Have you heard of Citizens for Decency Through Law of Montgomery County? Big story in the Inquirer today with this group. And they are patrolling bookstores and drugstores and video stores and so forth looking for offensive material. And one of them said, well, as she, you know, she had been reading all this stuff and goes into the stores and such, one lady is who's a, one of the committee members said, I don't like doing this. This woman's an educational consultant, by the way. She says, I don't like doing this. I don't like pornography. I don't like viewing it. But I feel that somebody's got to take a stand. Well, that's how I feel about this. This is a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. I remember there was an assistant district attorney years ago. And he made a specialty of this kind of thing. Of course, in those days, it wasn't nearly as terrible as it is now. No, it was uh, not quite so raw. But he would get on radio programs, and he would get interviewed in the newspapers and such. And uh, he would always carry with him a dispatch case in which he had magazines. And he said, imagine, look at this, look at this. And, you know, he got so well-known from this campaign against Smut that he finally was elected to the bench. He became a judge. He became a judge because everybody said, yeah, that's the guy that crusaded against Smut. Put him on the bench. I won't comment on what kind of a judge he is, but his office as the assistant district attorney, his office was very crowded with people that came in to see the collection. He became very popular in City Hall. 
Everybody wanted to see the dirty magazines and the dirty books. And it was very difficult 